So liquid carbon pathway. Now this is truly where we can actually build soil organic carbon. So the way it works is that we have our plant and there's four steps to this process. We have our photosynthesis, resynthesis, we have our extradition and we have humification. So four step process. First is photosynthesis. This is where our plants convert carbon dioxide in the atmosphere with water um, in our chlorophyll using sunlight into glucose and oxygen. And so you can see here, let's, if we follow the carbon, it goes from carbon dioxide into glucose, which is meant to be in our leaves. During the resynthesis stage, that glucose is then converted into other plant metabolites. So that can be starch, cellulose, proteins, fats, oils, and um, uh, organic acids. So this is the plant rebuilding um, different uh, compounds. The next stage is that a lot of these compounds are going to be extradited um, out the roots. And so that's all of our compounds. Now it's estimated that 30 to 40% of carbon fixed by plants are actually released as root extradites. And so when we follow our carbon, it's going now out, out through our roots into the rhizosphere, which is where all of our um, microbes hang out. And finally, we have humification. Now this is um, done by mycorrhizal fungi. It's actually a specific type of mycorrhizal fungi where they go actually into the um, plant root cells. So it's not just they hang out on the outside, but they actually go into the plant root. Um, so what happens here is that the mycorrhizal fungi will eat the um, root, extra, root extradites. And then um, the byproduct of that is humus. Now, humus contains typically 30, 40% um, a lipid content. And so these mycorrhizal fungi are producing humus from the root extradites. The positives of this pathway is that it rapidly, rapidly builds soil organic carbon. Uh, it builds a fungal network, produces large amounts of soil organic carbon, which is the real beauty of this. It's cheap and easy to do. Humus uh, is a really, it has a high resistance to decomposition and it builds soil organic carbon much deeper than the decomposition pathway. And so essentially, as far as you can get the roots in the soil to go, that's where you'll be building um, carbon. I saw again carbon. Negatives of this process is that it needs healthy plants and healthy microbes to function. And typically conventional practices inhibit this process, which is why um, it doesn't really happen so much in a lot of our agricultural systems. So the main positive of this is that this is um, absolutely, absolutely the best way to build soil again carbon. But the negatives of this is that the system needs to be kickstarted, and after years of um, not the best management for promoting the system, we really need to put some effort into making sure that we can kickstart this process. But once it does, we can actually achieve really high rates of um, uh, soil organic carbon being built in our in our soils. So you can see here, this is actually a trial that I ran on our farm. Um, uh, I used a, um, a vermiculture concentrate um, biostimulant and inoculant on these oats. And so you can see here, these on the on the roots, you've got these things called a rhizosheath. And that's where the root is extradating, um, these root extradates uh, and microbes are eating that all up and, um, and producing kind of like this, a, a sticky thing to stick all the soil particles onto the roots. And so you can see here, those are the two plants that got the treatment and they had a, like a much bigger root system than these two, which um, weren't. Even though these plants had um, the rhizosheath uh, rhizo as well, these ones definitely produced a, a much better result than these other two. Um, but essentially, I'm showing you this because if you can see these on your plants, it means you're heading, heading in the right direction. Um, this is really perfect um, if, you, if you're looking at building uh, soil organic carbon. If you can see these in your soil, you're in the right direction. So how can we maximize the liquid carbon pathway? Now, this is um, really important to pay attention. 
essentially we've got two stages. We've got our plant stage and we've also got our fungi stage. So the plant stage consists of increasing root extradation of uh, lipids. So um, as I said before, 30, 30 to 40% of uh, humus is lipid content. So if we can increase lipids uh, produced by our plants, then we should be able to increase the humus in our soil. So, so plants prioritize um, a, a certain sequence of uh, production. So they prioritize um, uh, photosynthesis first, then um, or they, they prioritize um, carbohydrate production, then protein production, then lipid production. So we need to increase all of that before we can actually increase our lipid production. Now, a lot of this information I got from um, John Kempf, so full credit to him. So first we want to increase our first and some key uh, nutrients that we can apply to our plants to really get that process going. That's magnesium, nitrogen, manganese, iron, sulfur, and um, phosphorus. Kempf estimates that plants are only synth uh, synthesizing, photosynthesizing at 15 to 20% of their capacity. So if we can essentially increase this by four times, the amount, you know, we can increase our root extradation by four times. That's going to, instead of having four years of growing this plant, we can do all that benefit in one. So that's a, that's a massive um, you know, benefit, speed up um, the whole process. Next, we want to increase the resynthesis into lipids. So as I said before, our plants prioritize uh, sugars, then proteins and lipids. What we want to do is increase the, the amount of uh, manganese, uh, magnesium, sulfur, lignin, and boron um, to allow for that process, or especially um, our sugars to protein. Finally, to increase our lipid production, the plant needs to have so much energy left over that it can actually achieve this um, process, which means our nitrogen which is typically applied as nitrate or um, uh, ammonium, it takes a lot of energy for the plant to convert those into amino acids. So the best way for plants to get their amino acid, uh, their uh, nitrogen is through being supplied amino acids and amino sugars. And that can be done with microbes. So we can only achieve um, this with really robust uh, microbes in our soil. But once we get to that, we can really increase our lipid production um, and really get this process going. The second aim for this process uh, is to have plants growing all year round. And so if you think of it, if we only have effective photosynthesis for four months out of the year, we're missing out on eight months of uh, potential root extradition. And so we can do that with regenerative grazing or holistic grazing or adaptive grazing or whatever you want to call it. But essentially, that is high stocking densities with long rest periods. So we graze our um, pastures down and allow those plants to um, regrow um, with a long time to rest. And we'll talk about that a bit later with our application. And in cropping systems, we want to make sure we're having cover crops or past cropping stuff to have a growing root in the ground all year round. And so that just increases the amount of root extra dates that we're producing. So the second stage, which is mostly the humification stage, and that's the fungal stage. So we wanna have a large amount of mycorrhizal fungi active to produce our humus. So how can we do that? We wanna stop the things that are killing our mycorrhizal fungi, such as um, our pesticide and fertilizer use. Um, fungicides, obviously, if we're trying to promote uh, a fungal in our a fungus in our soil, we don't want to kill it with fungicide. Fertilizers such as soluble uh, phosphorus um, fertilizers really inhibit mycorrhizal fungi development, um, and a lot of our salt-based fertilizers hurt our microbes. So we want to reduce the amount that we're using. Um, so no fungicides. We want to reduce tillage. If you think about it, if you've got this network of mycorrhizal fungi throughout our soil and we're running tines through our soil, that's going to break it all up and, and not be very good for our mycorrhizal fungi. 
We want to inoculate with microbes and biostimulants to get the system going. If we can coat our seeds in the mycorrhizal fungi to start with, that's going to get us a lot closer towards um, our goals than if we just waited for the mycorrhizal fungi to build up in our soil. And we also want to make sure our soils are always covered um, so that we're protecting the microbes when we don't have um, plants growing. So which is better? Which, which um, process is better? So it depends on our goals, but typically we have our decomposition pathway, which is better as a fertilizer and, um, and for mineralization. And then we have our liquid carbon pathway, which is better for building soil organic carbon. So if we look back at Dr. Christine Jones's photo, on the left-hand side, this is produced really by the liquid carbon pathway, having plants growing all year round with the pasture cropping uh, technique. Where, and then we, on the right-hand side, we have a decomposition pathway, which builds soil, uh, which builds soil organic carbon in the top 10 centimeters, but really doesn't do much in um, the bottom um, parts of our soil profile. And so for building soil organic carbon, it's definitely this, you know, liquid carbon pathway that builds soil at depth. And that's really what we're interested in. So which is better, neither is better. It just, there's just different tools that you can use and it depends on your goals. So if you, if you want to reduce your fertilizer bill, it might be better to have a look at the decomposition pathway. But if we want to increase our water holding capacity, it might be better to look down the liquid carbon pathway. But why can't we have both? The, this is what uh, Temp um, suggests. So yeah, you start with a decomposition focused pathway. So we're going to grow a cover crop, terminate that so we can feed microbes. The microbes are then going to feed our plants through the rhizophagy cycle. Um, that's going to feed our plants a lot more amino acids and amino sugars. So it's going to have a lot more energy to produce lipids. And then that's going to feed our micro, uh, our fungi, which are going to allow us to um, increase our humification process. So that's, a, that's a nice way to, I guess, draw everything in together.